محمد رسول الله الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله اللهم فصل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يؤذي جاره ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليكرم ضيفه ومن كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت صدق رسول الله فيما قال أو كما قال All praises and thanks to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Our Lord Master of Day of Judgment, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Dear respected sisters and brothers, today inshallah in our khutbah we will say a few words about akhirah, the next life the everlasting life. It was a Friday. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was at the mimbar when a man entered the masjid and asked, interrupting the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, when will the hour be established? The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, the companions, made gestures towards the man trying to stop him, trying to tell him to be quiet, but he repeated the same questions three times. After finishing the prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Where is the one? Where is the man who asked when the hour will be established? The man said, It was me, O Prophet of Allah. The, pro the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, What did you prepare for it? He replied, Not too much. But I love Allah and His Messenger. So the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A person will be with whomever he loves, and you will be with whom you love. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, beautifully emphasized in this hadith, to prepare for the tremendous day, Yawmun Azim, as one of the terms 
used in the Quran to describe the hour. As we understand from the hadith that it is more important to be ready than knowing the exact time and date of the final hour. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until the inevitable, meaning death, comes to you. Death, my dear sisters and brothers, comes nearer day by day. The most solid way to prepare for the hereafter is through genuine love for Allah and our Prophet and spending a life in such a manner that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the way of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear believers, a short period of time our Lord has given us in this world is a test as we recite in Surah Al-Mulk, verse number one. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He is the one who created death and life in order to test which of you best deeds. And He is the Almighty, all forgiven. Worldly life, despite that it is charming, tempting and glamorous will no doubt come to an end. Humanity will be brought together in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the judgment day. As Allah said in Surah Al-Jumah, ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ The death you are running away from will inevitably come to you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the seen and unseen and he will inform you of what you used to do. In another ayah, Surah Al-Isra, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَكُلَّ إِنْسَانٍ أَلْزَمَّاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا اِقْرَأْ كِتَابَكَ كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا In translation, we have bound every human's destiny to their neck. I and on the day of judgment, we will bring forth to each person a record which they will find laid open. And it will be said, Ikra kitabak, read your record. You alone are sufficient this day to take account of yourself. Those who believe and do righteous deeds in this world and adopt good morals as their way of life will receive the mercy of Allah Almighty and awarded with paradise which is the ultimate success as Allah Azza wa Jal said كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِطَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّغْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ Every soul will taste death and you will only receive your full reward on the day of judgment. Whoever is spared from the fire and is admitted into paradise will indeed triumph. Whereas the life of this world is no more than the delusion of enjoyment. Dear believers, as Muslims, our firm belief in the hereafter should determine how we live our life in this world, which is, which should be according to Quran and the Sunnah. Knowing with certainty that we will be accounted of our actions and deeds should prevent us 
from evil and wickedness. We should strive to say, stay on the right path that will lead us to goodness. As Almighty said in the Quran, من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلا نحيينه حياة طيبة. Whoever does good, whether male or female, and is a believer, we will surely bless them with a good life, and we will certainly reward them according to the best of their deeds. So living a life following the teachings of Islam will not only bless us with a good life in this world, but also prepare, prepares us for the hereafter. It will make us good people, good, exemplary, complete, decent, happy believers. Believers who firmly believe in the hereafter, live in peace with themselves, their family, their environment, and all living and non-living creatures. They can harm or hurt people. They respect other people's property, life, and honor. They treat their parents kindly. They show compassion and mercy to their children. They help the orphan, the poor, and those in need. They do not contaminate their earnings with haram. They stay away from indecency, wickedness, and aggression. They seek peace and happiness not through accumulation of wealth and property, position and status, fortune and fame, but in faith in Allah, the joy of worship and the beauty of morality. In a, one of the hadith, our Prophet wasallam said, let those who believe in Allah and the last day be generous to his neighbor. Let those who believe in Allah and the last day be generous to his guests. Let those who believe in Allah and the last day speak good or keep silent. Dear Muslims, what we sow in this world, it is what we will reap in the hereafter. Whatever we send forth, in this world, we will see it in the hereafter. Whatever we give in the name of charity and sadaqah in this world, we will find it in the hereafter. So let us not the temporary desires of the worldly life make us forget the hereafter. Let's appreciate five things before they are gone, as our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, life before death, free time before work, wealth before poverty, youth before old age, and health before sickness. Let us keep in mind the warning of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Ya ayyuha al-nasu inna wa'ad Allahi haqq fala tawurrannakum al-hayatu al-dunya O humanity, indeed Allah's promise is true so do not let the life of this world deceive you. Let us avoid things that can make us embarrassed in the hereafter. Let us not forget, forget that our Lord Subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable for what we have done and for what we have not done even though we had the opportunity to do so. As Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran, O believers, be mindful of Allah and let every soul look to what deed it has sent forth for tomorrow and feed Allah for certainly Allah is all aware of what you do. I would like to conclude 
this Friday's khutbah with two du'as. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the hereafter. O oh Allah, protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Allahumma aslih li akhirati allati fiha ma'adi waj'al al-hayata ziyadatan li fi kulli khayr waj'al al-mawta rahatan li min kulli sharr O oh Allah set right my next life my next life to which is my return and make life for me an increase in all good and make death a relief for me from every evil. Muhterem Müslümanlar, geçici olan şu dünyada hepimiz birer yolcuyuz. Rabbimizin takdir ettiği kadar bir ömür sürüp sonra da ebedi olan ahirete göç edeceğiz. Ahiret dünyada yapıp ettiklerimizin karşılığını bulacağımız ebedi yurdumuzun adıdır. Ahirete iman ise altı iman esasından biridir. Kıyamet mutlaka vuku bulacak. Dünya hayatı bütün çekiciliği ve cazibesine rağmen bir gün sona erecektir. Bütün insanlar mahşerde Cenab-ı Hakk'ın huzurunda toplanacak. Günahlarımız ve sevaplarımız mizan adı verilen şaşmaz terazide tartılacaktır. Amel defterimiz önümüze açılacak. İkra kitabek kefe bi nefsikel yevme aleyke hasibe. Kitabını oku. Bugün sana hesap sorucu olarak kendi nefsin yeter denilecektir. Dünyada iman edip salih amel işleyenler ve güzel ahlakı düstur edinenler Allah'ın rahmetine nail olacak ve cennetine gireceklerdir. Bu hayatta sorumluluklarını ihmal edenler ise karşılığında cehennemde cezalarını çekeceklerdir. Kıymetli müminler, ahirete iman dünya hayatımıza yön vermelidir. Hesap bilinci bizi kötülüklerden alıkoymalı, iyiliklere yönlendirmelidir. Ebedi bir hayat düşüncesi özümüzle, sözümüzle ve yaşantımızla bizi iyi bir insan, ideal bir mümin kılmalıdır. Peygamber Efendimiz bir hadisinde, Allah'a ve ahiret gününe iman eden komşusuna eziyet etmesin. Allah'a ve ahiret gününe iman eden misafirine ikram etsin. Allah'a ve ahiret gününe iman eden ya hayır söylesin ya da sussun. Değerli müminler, ahirete iman eden mümin kendisiyle, ailesiyle, çevresiyle canlı cansız bütün yaratılmışlarla barışık yaşar. Onun elinden ve dilinden hiç kimseye zarar gelmez. O bir başkasının malına, canına, iffet ve onuruna kastedemez. Ebedi hayata iman eden mümin kötülüklerden uzak durur. Kin, ihtiras, haset, düşmanlık gibi olumsuz duygularla hareket etmez. Kul ve kamu hakkı yemez. Kazancını haram karıştırmaz. Huzuru ve mutluluğu mal ve mülkte, makam ve mevkide, şan ve şöhrette değil, Allah'a imanda, ibadetlerin hazzında ve ahlakın güzelliğinde arar. Aziz müminler, hutbemi Cenab-ı Allah'ın şu ayetinin mealiyle bitirmek istiyorum. Ey iman edenler, Allah'a karşı gelmekten sakının ve herkes ahirete önceden ne göndermiş olduğuna baksın. Allah'a karşı gelmekten sakının. Şüphesiz Allah yaptıklarınızdan hakkıyla haberdardır. Ela inne ahsenel kelam ve ebleğen nizam. كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين الصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قاهل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ورض عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ذوي الصدق والوفاء وبقية العشرة المبشرة وآل بيت المصطفى وعن الأنصار والمهاجرين والتابعين إلى يوم الجزاء اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed, Allah commands you justice, grace, as well as courtesy to close relatives. He forbids indecency, wickedness, and aggression. He instructs you, so perhaps you will be mind mindful.